Let's do a little bit more work with methods in a class and see how they function. Let's create a brand new project and uh, let's go ahead and call this method me and I think I already have one called method me so I'm going to do a method me too but we want to make sure that we just do a regular console.app.net framework. So make sure it's a console.app.net framework. You can either get that by going to the Windows Classic or coming to Visual C Sharp and choosing that one. And I'm going to create that brand new project. And then let's go uh, make a simple class that has uh, one instance variable in it. And then learn how to work with what we call a property. So I'm going to come to this project and I'll come over to this project and right mouse click and choose add. Make a new class. Uh, you probably aren't going to be able to see that. Let me let me uh, bring that up a little bit higher. Add. Pull this window down. That way you can see it now. Right mouse click. Add class. So you want class. And it is a Windows class. And let's just call it student.cs. Press enter. And I'll move this window back up here. And here's our student class, and I'm going to go make what they call an instance variable, which is simply a variable in the class. And I'll make it a private scope, so it's only going to be visible in the class. And we'll say int, and it's going to be the age of a student. So this instance variable, which belongs in a class, is only going to be visible in the class. But I need people to have access to it. Now, in the past, I've created getters and setters method to get to this. Well, what we could do instead is create what we call a property. And that property is a way for us to provide access to the private instance variable, which has been encapsulated from the other software developers. In other words, it's hidden from them. They don't need to use it. We don't want them to work with it. The only way they're going to get to use it is if they go through a way that we tell them they can get to it. So what I could do is provide another variable int. Let's make this one capital age and come back here make that a lowercase age because this is usually the standard is that your instance variables become um, lowercase and then your properties will become uppercase. Now I put a semicolon there. Here's the difference. Instead of putting a semicolon, let's do a curly brace. So it's almost like we're saying this variable is going to have access to the whole world because it's public. And in order to make that access for other people to use it, we need to go and write a getter. And I don't even have to write a name on it. I just say return age. Now notice what I'm returning. I'm returning the private variable, not the public variable. I'm saying if you ever access the public variable, you can get to the private variable and we'll just return it. Now that I wrote a getter, I could also write a setter. And what do you think we do on the setter? Well, the setter receives some value. And what we want to do with that value is assign it to the private variable. And we could do anything we want in here. We could have more than one line. Uh, in fact, we could even say if the value is less than zero, then we want to say age is equal to zero, else. age is equal to whatever we receive as a value. Make sure you add one more curly brace right here to match that curly brace. And then I went and set two breakpoints. Next thing I did is I came back to the main program and I added this statement which says go create a variable called student of type student. Call the constructor. Then we're going to say student dot age. Now remember the age was the public property we made, which gives us access to the private instance variable. 
we call these backing properties. And so the only way we can get to this private variable is through this public property because we can't even call the methods themselves because the methods don't have names. But we do have a getter and a setter associated with that public property. This keyword value, that is a keyword. It's a reserved word associated with that set. And the set automatically receives. It's almost like it has this. But we don't see it there. And it only has one value coming into it. And it's actually called value. And it's automatically passed there and goes into that value variable. So this is a keyword. That's reserved. C Sharp recognizes that. So when I come back over to here and I now say age equals 10, C Sharp is smart enough to come over here to the class, call the setter, pass 10 into that value. And then when I go to print it off, C Sharp is smart enough to say, oh, that's a getter. So it comes here and it returns that private age. Let's run the program and see how it works. So we hit our breakpoint right here. Let's see if it actually calls the setter. You want to choose this one, F11, step into. Yes, we want to go ahead and do that. We drop into this loop. Look what goes into value, 10. Automatically happens for you because value is a keyword. It's a reserved word from C Sharp. Is it less than 10? No. So go ahead and take value and assign it to the private attribute age. We come back over to here. Let's do the right line. We drop into here and it says return the 10, the private value 10, and then it prints it off to the screen and it waits for a keystroke. And that's how you can create your own backing variables. We call them properties. Uh, we've done it before where we just came into here and we said public get age return age. Sorry, we have to also say public int age return age and public set age this dot age equals my value. You've seen in other other videos that we could do this, but that sure is a lot of typing compared to just get and set. One other thing I want to point out is the keyword this. This allows us to do shadowing. Actually, it allows us to specify that we're specifically working with an instance variable. If this parameter had been called age and I just said age is equal to age we're gonna have a problem In fact we have a warning on it and it says it's not really sure what you mean you're assigning the same variable its value and that's because even though we have a private variable called age this parameter called age same name was the last variable we created and since it was the last variable created it takes precedence over this variable. So anytime in this function it sees the word age, it thinks that you're working with the parameter and not working with the property, the instance variable. So what we can do to clarify that is add the word this in front of it. Now that you see the word this in front of it, it says you're working with an instance variable. We could have also said this dot calc age. If we had a method called calc age, you could say the word this dot method name. This is just a keyword that allows us to specify that we're working with an instance variable or a method within the class and it allows us to avoid any type of naming issues. I'm going to go ahead and delete this public getter and setter because we did the same thing with this public property. There's our getter, there's our setter. And that's how you can create your own. Um, another thing that we could do is let C Sharp help us write that code. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe out all of this code inside that class. So that's all I have, class student. And what I could actually do now is type in the word P-R-O-P-F-U-L-L -L 
prop full and press tab tab. Notice it's going to make a property and a backing field. In other words, an instance variable. Tab tab. Private int. Press tab. Type in the word age. Tab. Type in age. Tab. Notice it automatically creates the property and the instance variable and the getter and setter. It just puts it all on one line. Is that okay? Sure. Or I could do this. I could go and wrap it around um, on multiple lines if I wanted to do that. And I could even come in here and write my little if statement. If value is less than zero, age is equal to zero, else age equals value. So in other words, by typing the word P-R-O-P-F-U-L-L, -L, tab, tab, that will help you write your instance variable and your public property with the getter and setter.